What's up, people? I'm Coach Chris, and in today's video, I want to explain to you what Move the Needle content is. So, Move the Needle content is content that actually gets people to buy, right? Because we have the nurturing content, you know, that teaches them something. Um, we have the story content that really, really helps people learn more about who we are and our business, our values, principles, all that stuff. Move the Needle content is what gets people off the fence, right? So, Move the Needle content is what gets people to say, okay, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know if I want to buy, but I'm going to buy because of this, right? So first off, one of the best forms of Move the Needle content, well, before I even get to that, the reason why Move the Needle content is important is because that is what gets people to make a decision, right? Because if you just keep letting people kind of waver and ah, I don't know, I don't know, they're not going to buy. They aren't going to make that decision and make that move to actually buy. So the most popular form of needle content is sales. A sales graphic you see on an Instagram story or on somebody's page, that's move the needle content because it's content, it's a graphic that you saw, and it's trying to get you to buy. It's moving the needle is going to get you to actually make a decision. That's not the best though, because if you're selling, I don't know, if you're selling purses or watches, physical products, that's great. But if you're selling something that people know you have a unlimited amount of, then it's kind of hard to say there are only a few left or here's a discount price here. Like it, it can still work, but most people are smart enough now to where they know it's a sales tactic and they don't like it, right? So you want to stay away from that. So uh, besides that one, that basic stuff, the best move the needle content is something that really, really gets people to make the decision. One of the pieces of Move the Needle content that I use a lot are testimonials. And the great thing about testimonials is you can actually use those a lot, right? Because, I mean, let's be real, our organic reach on all of these platforms is very limited. So you can post your testimonials as many times as you want to. It's very rare that the same person will actually see it over and over again, right? So the reason why testimonials are great is because that shows proof. It shows somebody that went through your program, they work with you, and they got some value from it. They learned something from it. They grew their business. They did whatever they did. They got this result, this great result from your product or your service. So now when you post that video, um, and that's another thing too, whenever I ask for testimonials, I always want videos because videos, I can post them everywhere. I can send them in emails. I can add them to sales pages. I can do so much more with a video testimonial than I can with a written testimonial. And to be honest, I've seen some people fake written testimonials. So that's why I, I know if I don't trust them, my audience probably doesn't, right? So not, not, and I won't say that you shouldn't get written, you still can. But for me, I prefer videos just because it's more authentic, right? There's nothing more real than someone being on camera like this and telling you, yeah, I worked with Chris and he did this and he did that. And before I worked with him, I was here. After we worked together, I'm here. And it's so much better because of that. Like you can't really beat that right? Because it's someone in your face telling you that. Video is going to be the best connector besides face-to-face -face in person. So always ask for video testimonials if you can. That's pro tip. Now, with those video testimonials, you can post it on your Instagram page. You can run retargeting ads to it, which really, really works, right? So for example, um, a great retargeting way or move the needle content strategy is Let's say you post a lot of content on Instagram and people are always engaging with it. You're building, you're building, you're building, you're building. You can run a retargeting ad to the people who have engaged with your content on Instagram in the last year if you want to. And then show them a specific video of someone that has went through one of your programs or bought one of your products. And that's going to get people to buy because now they look and see, wow, well, I watch this person content. And I like it. You know, I watch five IGTV videos and a couple on their page. I love it. Now I see a video with someone who actually went through this program that I want to buy and they got great results. Okay, let me see what else what was what's good about this. Now that's when you'll get them onto that next step. So move the needle content is best in video form and it's really good to retarget people who have already engaged with you. So we talked about content to build the attraction and get them in and the conversation part where you started talking to people, even if you get them on the phone. Now the move the needle content is what's conversion content. That is, it could be in emails. The videos aren't the only way you can do it. You could even send good emails. Now in emails, this is the thing. What works a lot is the scarcity. Right. When you tell people there are only a few spots left 
and the discount is going away. Like those work really well. But what I will say is some people don't like those. You know, some people don't like them because a lot of people abuse it, right? They'll say there are only a few spots left, but then be selling the same program next week, right? Like I thought it was only a few spots left. You lying. Like, <laughs> and people will call you out about that. So for me, I say, if you're going to tell people there are only a few spots left, the discount's going away, you got to keep it that way. You have to keep it that way. You can't switch it up in three days. Now, if you do switch it up six months or four months later, or even three months, a quarter later, that's fine. But some people just do it a really scammy way where they tell people, yeah, it's going to be five remaining. And then they sell those five. And then two days later, they're like, wait, we got more of a digital product that's unlimited. So you can buy it again at the discounted price. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's clearly sales manipulation. Um, and personally, I don't do it. I think it's better long term for the customer relationship if you let them know, hey, look, this is a course, yes, but only it's only priced at this amount for the first 10 people. Like you can sell it that way. You know, um, you can also sell it from a position of, hey, look, there it's a coaching program. I can only take 10 people because I want to deliver the utmost value to those 10 people. You know, that could work. Um, and honestly, that's a lot better just for your, again, your relationship long term will be a lot better with your customer because if you're selling them products or delivering a service, you want them to come back, right? Like you want to be able to deliver that value to them, to help them with something, deliver those solutions, and then have those same people come back to work with you again. That really won't be able to happen if you're so focused on getting a sale that you will, you're willing to manipulate them. Right. You're willing to lie about the sales and the discounts and stuff. You don't need that. Like your move the needle content should be testimonial. It should be proof. Right. And another form of move the needle content is also a simple trial. Right. So a trial could look like you have software, you have a membership or something and, you know, you let them get a test run. You know, and me, I've actually done that before. Why I'll do a trial coaching session where it's a full 12 week program, but I'll give you the first session at a discounted price. Now, the reason why I don't do that for free is because people don't appreciate anything that's free. I don't ever do anything free like that because if I give you an hour and a half free, people will show up late. They won't. I always give people materials to complete before our coaching session. So we have things to discuss specifically. They won't do that part. Um, some people won't even open your email. They won't respond. Like they'll ghost you when you gave, gave them this free time. You don't want to give people your free time because they just don't appreciate it. So be really careful with that. But that can still be um, a, a move the needle content. And you can even have like a free course is move the needle content. That works because the whole point of move the needle content is to inspire people to buy. If they get a free program from you and it's outlined and it's a full breakdown, then they're going to love that. They're going to appreciate it. Right. And the people that are obviously that are smart, that want to go to that next level, they now see the value in what you do and they're willing to pay full price for that program. So what I would advise is if you're watching this, your moving needle content should be video testimonials. That's the best place to start. And I even have a photo on my phone of video <laughs> testimonials. When I get them from clients, I just screen record it, save it on my phone so I can send it. Like I'll get DMs from somebody asking me for proof of what I do. And I just will shoot them that video. Like, here you go. Look at this, you know, and this is and that's really useful if you don't have some fancy website yet. You know, don't worry about the website and all that stuff. You can still convert without that. Like you can make it happen without it. Now, you still need it later, but you can convert without it. So you can even have a, a file, a photo on your computer. I think that's important, too, because then. What you're doing is you have a stash everywhere. So when you're creating a sales page or you're creating a testimonial page on your website, it's just a, t a, a ton of them, just a list of people that have gotten value from you, right? And written ones, again, I see a lot of people do that. They take Facebook posts or Twitter posts. Those work very, very well. And that honestly is the only way you should do written testimonials, in my opinion. Because if you just write it up there and then paste, paste a picture, do we really know that that's a testimonial? Like, how do people know that? But if you take somebody's Facebook post and, you know, you just cross their name out. If you take somebody's um, tweet when they talked about how great your product, your service was, cross their name out so people can't uh, obviously bother them, then that's a valuable testimonial. And so I guess my overall point, too, is testimonials are the best move the needle content because it's so when somebody else is talking about how great you are, 
that's a different level of greatness. Like when you talk about yourself, that's confidence. When they talk about you, that's greatness. I'm gonna have to coin that one. I just came up, I'm coining that one. So what you gotta do for this episode, make sure you get started on your moving needle content. Go to all your old customers, all the people you used to work with. Make sure you connect with them and ask for a 30 second testimonial. I'm Coach Chris and I'll see you next time.